Hello everyone and welcome to this video on creating your own custom materials in Blender. In this video we're going to be discussing how to use generated textures to create these materials. I've been using Substance Designer quite a bit and it's given me a little bit of insight on how to better use these generated textures in Blender. And I'm still planning on doing the environment tutorials that I promised a few weeks ago, uh, but currently Blender's UI is changing almost weekly. So I really want to make sure that that's more consistent before I create those videos. I think the official release is in sometime in June or July, so uh, I'm planning for around that time. In this video, we're going to be discussing how to create this peeled paint effect. And we're also going to be discussing a paid add-on on the Blender market. It's called Node to Code, and it was created by Blender artist The Timster. It's amazing. So we're going to talk about how to use that to store these materials inside of Blender for use in further projects. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to add a noise texture. So we'll type Shift A and go to Texture and then choose Noise Texture. And it's important that the, the texture coordinates be set to Object. So I, by default it's generated, so we'll switch it to Object. And next we need a color ramp, so we'll type Shift A, go to Converter, and then add that color ramp. And I'm testing this texture out on a sphere because it's important to see how generated textures wrap around curved objects. Uh, but on this color ramp, I'm going to switch the blend type to constant, which just means that there's no gradient. It's simply black and white with no values of gray in between. And now I'm just trying to isolate that black value so that it's uh, just speckled across the surface of the sphere. And that value will represent the area of the paint that's been peeled back or damaged. So I'll take the detail up a little bit so that it creates a little bit of that generated noise around the edges. So a value of 5 looks pretty good. And so what we've just done is created a mask to separate the two colors of the material. Uh, but there's quite a bit more to do because typically materials are built in layers of color and bump and so on. So uh, if we duplicate this color ramp twice, then now we can start working on some of those other elements. First, let's plug the factor of that noise texture into those duplicated color ramps. And if you use Control shift left click you can view this bottom color ramp. And what we're going to do is switch that blend type back to linear, which gives that soft gradient effect and all those other values. And we're going to start building the bump effect. So the way that we can create a height map with this color ramp is let's actually add a new slider here. So we'll click this little plus tab. And if we move it to the right of the white slider, uh, we see that we have this gray value, which is sort of a mid-level height, and then it goes to this white value, which is raised up, and then we have the black, which is uh, a very low value. So let's combine the height mask with the color mask, because we need these to match up very closely. Uh, so this will be just to help us as a guide, basically, to, uh, to match those up. I'll take this factor value down pretty low, just so the color mask above is basically just used as a reference. And so the goal here is to just match up these edges. So if I select this black slider and move it away, that's obviously the wrong direction. So I have to move it very close to this white slider. And if you go too far, you'll, you'll know because it'll all turn gray. And so I think that's probably as close as it's going to get. So now we can delete this mixed color node. And let's take a look at how this bump looks in the rendered view. So if we plug the principal shader into the material output, type Shift A and go to Vector and choose the bump node, plug that into the normal input, and the color of that color ramp into the height value, uh, we can see that we get a pretty good result. So it looks like it's peeling up around the edges. And now we can add some color to the material. So Let's type Shift A and go to Color and then choose Mix RGB and plug it into the color of the principled shader. And the top value I'm going to set to like a rust color and the bottom I'm going to choose the color for the paint. In this instance I'm going to use a yellow color. 
And now if we take the color ramp that's our color mask and plug it into the mix factor, we see that we have separated those two colors. Now I'd like to fake some shadow detail or some ambient occlusion. Uh, so let's first move this color ramp to the top. So we'll just rearrange these two and then move them back down, keeping them organized. So now that we have this height information, uh, it just looks a little flat where the paint is peeling because naturally it would create a little bit of shadow detail underneath. And we can create that really easily. Um, let's first take this mix RGB and we'll duplicate it with shift D and we'll just drop it into the line. We'll switch the blend type to multiply and we'll plug the second color ramp into the bottom value. And let's switch the blend type to ease and we'll move the black slider as close as we can to the white. Let's add this to the viewer node so that we can see what we're doing. We'll click the little plus tab to add another slider and we'll move it to the other side of the black and now we've created this little border. Let's change that to a white color. So we have white, black, white. And now that we, we have that, we can see that we've created this, this effect that's just simulating a shadow. So now let's add this second mix RGB to the, the viewer node so that we can match this up. And we'll take this black value and just adjust it so that it, it meets the edge of this mask. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, so we'll check it out in a rendered view. It's a bit dark, but that's okay because we'll be making a node group. So we'll add that ambient occlusion value to our node group so that we can control whether it's you know lighter or darker. Uh, but one more thing that I want to do is I want to add some different variations in the roughness. So if we type Shift A again, and then choose color and mix RGB, we can plug this right into the roughness input on the principal shader. And just as before, the top color input represents the rust and the bottom is the paint. Uh, so for the paint, I want this to be a darker value because I want it to be more specular, more uh, shiny, I suppose, and the rust will be less glossy. So now let's use that color ramp mask as the mix factor. And I think I wanna make this a little less dark so that it's not so glossy it should be it should be a little rough okay it's not looking too bad uh, maybe one more thing i'd like to do is make the paint look a little dirty or grimy because it does look a little too clean at the moment for something that's peeled and rusted it should naturally look a little dirty so let's duplicate this mix rgb node and we'll change this rust color to something else something like a, maybe like a greenish brown and we'll uh, plug this color into the the second color slot, which was the paint. And now we'll duplicate this noise texture. And let's just adjust the scale and plug in the mapping node. And we'll use that factor as the mix value. Okay, it's maybe a bit too dark, so I can adjust that color because I want the effect to be really quite subtle. Okay, it's better, and uh, then maybe take the scale back down some. And after you're finished adjusting your settings to the way that you like them, uh, we can actually turn this material into a node group. So let's first organize everything so that it makes some visual sense. So first at the top we have all of the color detail and then we have that ambient occlusion in the middle and then the bump on the bottom. So let's box select everything and then type control G and that turns this into a node group. And let's select this input node and we need to decide what we want plugged into it. Uh, the first thing is probably the color of the paint. So we'll just plug this right in. And if we hit the N key, it'll bring up our side panel here and it shows all of the inputs and outputs that we're adding. So the next thing we can plug in the color of the rust and we can change the names up in the uh, this little input box. So I'll change the first one to paint and the second one rust. And so probably the next thing that we should add is the scale of the effect. 
And then also the detail and distortion um, sliders, we can add those as well. And then finally, we need to add the uh, ambient occlusion effect too, because we said we wanted some control over how dark that effect is. So we'll plug the, the mix factor into that input node. So let's change the name of that one from factor to AO. And I think that'll do it for the inputs. We could add some other things like the color of the, uh, the grimy dirt as well, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. Uh, next, we can concentrate on the outputs and we have all of the outputs already plugged in. So uh, I wanna switch the normal or the bump to the bottom and the middle one, we need to change this color to roughness. Okay, so let's get out of edit mode by pressing tab and let's pull our node all the way out. And so now we have all of these settings uh, just directly in this one node group to control all of these different effects. We can change the color. We can scale the effect to make it larger or smaller, or we can add the, uh, with this distortion value, we can actually make it look like there's like a scratched paint effect, which looks pretty cool. Now let's change the name of this node. So we'll just click here in this little box and I'll call this peeled paint. Then as I said before, we were going to discuss the add-on node to code. It is a paid add-on for the Blender market, but for me, it's extremely worth it. I think it's amazing. Um, when you install the add-on, you have these settings down here. So first I'm going to change the name to peel to paint. And it's important that you have that node selected too as well. So make sure that it's selected and then name it and click generate add-on, which it adds that Python file here. Now you have to, to find a place to export it to. So in my case, I'm just going to send it to the desktop. This add-on will actually do a lot more than I'm demonstrating here. You can actually select multiple nodes and create a Python file with several shaders, or I create custom icons and do lots of other stuff too. Um, but this, we're just keeping it simple. So I've just exported that to my desktop. Now I've opened a new blend file. I'll go to edit preferences, and then in add-ons, I'll click install and then locate the add-on, this peeled paint.zip, and install add-on from file. And here it is, so just check this little box and then click Save Preferences. Now when you're working in Blender, if you say switch to cycles, go to rendered view, open up the shader editor. Now down here at the very bottom, we have this peeled paint option. So we can click add setup and our node just appears in Blender. So it's amazing. You can save these in and just use them to help speed up your workflow. Let me know what you guys think about making these custom material node groups out of generated textures. I really kind of enjoy the process and would like to make more. So if you guys are into it, just you know, drop a comment and let me know. I do have my own add-on coming to the Blender market very soon. It's called Mask Tools, and it's a way of texture painting with noise and adding a variety of other effects to your models to help with the texturing process. You can do some pretty interesting stuff with it. I, uh, I actually used the Timster's Node to Code to create this add-on. I'll leave a link to the, uh, the add-on Node to Code in the description if you want to check it out. I highly recommend you do. And I'll keep you posted on when my add-on comes out as well. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.